Hi everyone, I'm back in my spare room and today I'm going to show you the process I've gone through to rehang the door and it's a little bit more tricky than you'd normally think because I've narrowed the doorway slightly and like everything in this house the doorway is massively off square. So I'm going to have a little bit of trimming to do and hinge adjustments and reinstallation of the door furniture, that sort of thing. For those of you kind subscribers who follow my videos regularly, you'll see that the carpet has now been installed in the spare room. All the painting has been done and that knuckle door lining that's been featuring in various recent videos has been filled and painted with a couple of coats of primer and a couple of coats of eggshell top coat. So this is the door. You'll see it's sitting at a mad angle in relation to the door frame uh, because it's got a very weird cutout on the bottom of the door because this is an old Victorian cottage and I, I don't think this door frame is particularly square so the door itself has been cut down over the years so that it fits into the doorway. So the first thing I've got to do is remove this disgusting dated, well some of you might quite like it, 1970s door furniture. If you're thinking of buying a power tool you might consider one of these from Ryobi. I use this tool more and more often. I actually bought it because I was doing a job for a client in Switzerland a couple of years ago so I needed something really neat to, to put in my hand luggage and I, I also bought this at the time. It's a real shame that Ryobi don't seem to stock it at the moment. I think I bought it at b and at the same time as I bought the drill for the same reason and just check this out. I have replaced a few of the components over the years but it's just a lovely little tool belt, little portable tool belt that has most of the um, screwdriver bits that you'd need on a, on a regular basis. You've got the HSS drill bits, wood drill bits, a couple of masonry drill bits. You've got nut drivers, uh, PH1s, 2s and 3s, PZ2s and 3s, and various sizes of TX screw bit. But the reason I'm showing you this is because right now I need probably this one here, SL5. Now you've only got to lift this door approximately into position to see we've got quite a lot of cutting down to do. I basically got about 18 mil to take off the door and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off both sides of the door so I end up with two nice planed edges on each side of the door. Normally I do all my cutting and sanding outside but as the weather's foul at the moment I'm going to do it in here. Uh, so I've brought my old saw, my Stanley saw horses up and I'm literally just going to use the door, pop the door on top to do my cutting. That is why saw horses are brilliant, even if you don't convert them into a portable workshop table like I did a couple of weeks ago. Right, I switched the lights out and I've put my DeWalt laser level in here just to show you how mad this door frame is. Look how far out of square this door frame is. 22 millimetres off square. So this is got, what I've got to put up with and factor into the adjustments to my door. Now, I want to get this door to fit the old wonky frame as snug as possible, even if that means adding bits to other parts of the door. So the first thing I need to do is take the incredibly uneven frame as I'm demonstrating now and reflecting that on the door using my sliding bevel. So yeah, I've taken the bevel here and I've basically marked on the door the line the bevel's showing. And I'm doing exactly the same thing on this side, having just pushed the bevel up into the corner of the frame. Now just with a piece of wood, make sure the two lines meet up. And marked it with a pencil. Now normally when I'm adjusting door frames I'd use my electric plane. But today I'm going to show you how a circular saw can do a really good job on cutting down a door. Measuring the distance from the blade to the guide, that's 28mm, and then I'm positioning my piece of wood 28mm from the edge of the door, and then making it tight with one of these brilliant little clamps I've just bought from Axminster. It's the first time I've done this. Um, a lot of people will be watching this video thinking, oh god, if you had a fest tool, you'd have a proper fence, you have a proper saw guide. That's all coming. I'm going to be making a guide soon and I'll show you a video on that but right now I'm just using a good old piece of wood. 
I'll be doing a bit of a video soon on my circular saw, but for the sake of today's video, the crucial thing you've got to make sure when using one of these circular saws is that the blade goes just down below the surface you're cutting. If you make it too, if you make it go down too far, you can find the blade wonders, and that's what happened when I first bought this. I actually bought this and then thought. You know what, every time I use it, the blade wanders and I stop using it until a good friend of mine pointed out where I was going wrong. So I'm just clamping that down. So here goes. Do you know what, I've got to say, I'm pretty pleased with that. It's cut a beautiful square line. No sign that the blade has wandered, so I'll be using this circular saw a lot more for this sort of application. Now the next step is to take five millimeters off the side of the door to make it more in line with where it should be in the frame itself. This time I'm gonna use the little fence that comes with the uh, circular saw, because I know that with the fence, I'm gonna get a brilliant consistent cut particularly given that I'm lining the fence up so close to the saw blade. So I'm just setting it so that the saw is gonna cut on the outer edge of that five millimeter line. And away we go. See, that's the cut. I've got a little bit of fine tuning of the door to do now. I know that this side of the door is square, so I'm gonna do my fine tuning on the other angle, and this time I'm gonna use my wood plane. I've measured the door frame width for the top, the middle, and the bottom, so I know exactly how wide the door should be, and I'm ultimately gonna take five mil off that so that the door fits as it hinges into the frame. I've then got a long straight piece of timber that's longer than the door itself so I can stretch it across the length and I've marked a line on the door showing what I want to remove. Now I just need to get planing. Initially started with my plane on quite a deep setting to remove a fair amount of timber and as I get closer to the line I can adjust the depth setting on the plane to a much finer cut. using this straight edge to check the door is nice and straight. And then a combination square to ensure I've planed the door nice and square. So the door now fits. When I moved into the house, this door was in a bit of a mess and carpenters who obviously put it in, whether the floors have changed, whether the walls have moved over the years, but I've got a thumping very big gap at the top now. I'm gonna check when the hinges are in, whether that's because as the door opens, it hits the floor. But in the meantime, I've got this handy little tool I made from a piece of four by two, which I actually made so that I could put it under plasterboard and jack plasterboard up to the ceiling when I was dry lining. But I'm now gonna use this to good effect on this door. So I'm gonna lift the door up and put the little jack underneath the door. Now I can put my foot on it and lift the door up and down. And the reason why that's good is I can now press down on the, my little pivot, raising the door up to where I want it, off the, seat, off the uh, top of the door lining, about there. Now I can mark my hinges. So 
So I've got one hinge mark there. Now you can't see it on the shot, but I'm just marking the bottom hinge. Yeah, I've got my line just marked so I can now get the bottom hinge marked off in exactly the right place. Check this out guys, I've just found another brilliant little use for these clamps. Clamping up the sawhorse to my door. Right, so you can see here the, the marks that I've made on the door a moment ago. Now all I need to do is get my hinge, put it up against the marks and mark the position that I've got to rebate. And then looking at the thickness of the hinge, I'm going to do a rebate into the door of approximately two millimetres. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out this rebated section here with a chisel as well. It's just splitting the paintwork, but what I want to do is get a nice neat line. These are some sort of moulded wooden doors, pretty nasty things really. So I have chipped the paintwork a bit there, but what I will get as a consequence of doing this there's a nice neat line when I start to chisel out the top of the hinge. It's a bit labour intensive this, but if you make the effort at this stage makes it so much easier to remove the rebated section of the hinge. I'm cutting at an angle because you see that's encouraging the little leaves to lift up and you really want to space them about two to three millimeters apart because then they really start to come away. Now even just rubbing away at them makes them start to come away. I just want to get through this hardboard front layer of the door because it's a bit pr problematic otherwise. do at this point is I just get my hinge and offer it up to see where the high points are.
and then just drilling pilot holes I always like to drill a pilot hole into the actual hinge itself so that the screw doesn't wander and throw the hinge out of position Right, the idea of hanging a door can be pretty intimidating, but if you've lined up the hinges as I showed you earlier on, it should just be a question, once you're ready to hang the door, of getting it in position and then putting the screws in place. Now, the way I get the door into position is by getting a block of wood underneath the door to exactly the right height so that you're literally then just pivoting the door into place and then putting the screws in. Uh, using that wedge that I showed you yesterday is actually a really good tool for this. Because of the angle on it, you can literally slide it up or down the door to get the door at exactly the right height rather than having to constantly offer up lots of different bits of wood. And then once you've got it at the right height, it's simply a question of swinging the door into place. I always put a middle screw in just to start with. Now I can work on the bottom hinge. At this point I'm just lifting it away from the wedge. Look at that, fits beautifully. Again, quick screw into the centre hole. And then that's it. But for me the story doesn't end there by a long way because what I've got to do now with my uneven door frames you see it actually would shut at, it would shut at the top because we've got a nice gap but it doesn't at the bottom so I'm bringing the door to the frame and then I'm marking against the door what I've got to remove so now it's back to my electric plane to take off that thin slither from the bottom of the door so that it can shut properly And it closes. All that remained to do now was to cut a piece of timber to go on the underside of the door to make up the gap that we've got and I've done this by cutting a strip off a piece of 18 millimeter deep planed timber. Now with the filler piece in place on the bottom of the door, I need to just replicate the bonkers angle of my floor, which I know is 18 mil deeper in the center and tapering back to 14 mil at the sides. Now that filler piece has done the job beautifully. Now I've got a door that actually fits. I might just take a tiny bit more off. You can hear it just brushing against the carpet at the edges. And then there's just a little bit at the edge and a little bit in the middle. Do I go overboard? Because I've already taken a little bit too much off the side of the door when I did this. When I planed the bottom of the door, I went a bit over the top with the plane and just caught the the um, veneer on the front of this rather nasty moulded door so I'm just using my trusty two-part filler to smooth over the, um, the sort of gashes and you achieve a brilliant result doing this I'm using my I'm using my continental filler knife which is a nice little tool. I used to just use a standard decorator's knife to do this. But the filler's knife just gives you a little bit more feel and touch. 
you just get a nice, slightly nicer job. And as you'll see from watching any of my videos on wood filling, the smoother, the, the less residue you can leave on the surface, the easier it is to sand it off afterwards. Now I just need a light sand with some 120 grain sandpaper. ready for painting. I primed the entire door using my trusty John Stone's John Krill wood based primer undercoat. Gotta say I do not enjoy painting. It's one of the few DIY jobs that I don't enjoy. I'm using for this acrylic durable eggshell from Johnston's. So that's it, a little bit of a long, unwieldy video and I'll probably get a few people commenting saying for all that work, why didn't you buy a new door? Well, that's sort of the way I'm rolling on this uh, house refurb. I haven't got a massive amount of money to go out and replace things so I'm just trying to repair, patch up and uh, renovate whenever, wherever I can. And I hope you'll agree that the overall finished effect has been worth all the effort. If you're wondering how I installed the new tubular latch and the doorknobs, where I got them all from, there's a link coming up on the screen now to that video that I did a few weeks ago. So I hope you've all found this video useful. And Nikki Scott, if you've watched the whole of this video, thank you for your patience in waiting. I know you asked me a few weeks ago when I was going to post this video. So thank you all for continuing to watch my videos. I will be posting a couple of quite interesting videos in the next couple of weeks on my new favorite tool, a circular saw I recently bought that's revolutionized my ability to cut long sheets of wood. And also I'll be doing an upgrade to my folding workbench table, which is sort of related to the circular saw video. As ever, if you've liked today's video, please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.